a necktie and a Panama hat Her passport shows her face from another time and place She looks nothing like that And all the remnants of a recent past are scattered in the wild wind She walks across the marble floor Where a voice from the gambling room Is calling her to come on in She smiles, walks the other way As the last ship sails And the moon fades away From Black Diamond Bay Hi, everybody. My name is Andy Hill, and I'm here with my music partner, Renee Safier. Hey there. Welcome to the seventh installment of Talkin' Bob Dylan. We've been immersing ourselves for a few weeks in what we call the Types of Bob Dylan Songs. We've been alluding to it for several podcasts, and today we're finally going to tackle Black Diamond Bay. So, Black Diamond Bay, what about it? Well, Black Diamond Bay counts as one of Dylan's quote-unquote long songs, clocking in at about seven minutes, and it's on the 1976 album Desire, which also includes Hurricane and Isis. So that must those three songs take up quite a bit of the album right there. Now, this song contains seven verses, and it begins with a woman whose appearance has changed since her passport photo was taken. The listener gets the impression that she's leaving her former self behind and embarking on something new. So over the next couple of verses, additional characters are introduced. There's the desk clerk, the Greek, a soldier, a tiny man, a gambling addict, a card dealer, and eventually uh, Walter Cronkite, if you remember him, the famous CBS news anchor. So this tale, it's a complex and layered one. It opens at a hotel casino in a place called Black Diamond Bay. The woman, she's being romantically pursued by a soldier. At the same time, a Greek character is planning to commit suicide in his room. And when the woman rejects the soldier for his lack of wealth, he entertains the, and then embarks on a homosexual encounter with the tiny man, either by way of an anecdote to sexual frustration or because of a surprising change or expansion of personal sexual orientation. It's kind of hard to tell. Then a losing gambler finally wins, just as the earthquake begins to shake, rendering his change of luck a joyless victory. All the while, a desk clerk is in the middle of the action, observing and commenting. So the volcano is on the rise and is alluded to in the final lines of each stand as it builds and it ultimately explodes. One of the themes certainly seems to be the cosmic randomness or pointlessness of human ambition and pursuit. Now, it isn't until the seventh verse that the narrator speaks of himself in the first person, watching certain events unfold on television, on the national news. Some say the song is influenced by Joseph Conrad's novel, Victory. Not having read the novel, I'll have to say that may be. And there's a lot of talk about where Black Diamond Bay actually is. Though interesting, I don't think that's particularly important. And I'll get to that later on. There is a nod to T.S. Eliot in the line, As the yellow fog is lifting, the Greek is quickly heading for the second floor. Reading from the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, T.S. Eliot writes, The yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes, the yellow smoke that rubs its puzzle on the window panes, licked its tongue into the corners of the evening, lingered upon the pools that stand in drains. I think the nod to T.S. Eliot is relevant in that the characters in Black Diamond Bay will all ultimately fail in their pursuits. But, unlike Proof Rock, it's because of the indiscriminate violence of Mother Nature, rather than as a result of their own limitations, lack of ambition, character flaws, etc. While Dylan may well be echoing T.S. Eliot with his choice of image, The extension of that image to parallel meaning, I think, is overreaching. Some interpret Black Diamond Bay as a song describing the detachment that mankind feels for his fellow man and a warning for the consequences of that detachment 
and the consequences of simple sins of omission and self-indulgence. I've read one interpretation where the song is seen as a biblical parable, with the woman on the white veranda ascending to heaven, while all the other characters will go to hell. The problem with the religious interpretation and the, quote, consequences of sins and self-indulgence interpretation are that they rest on the requirement of special pleading in order to hold water. Are we really to believe that a whole island sank because a guy had a gambling problem and needed to be taught a lesson in self-discipline? After all, there were probably innocent babies on the island too, etc., etc., And to respond to that, that the innocent babies would have gone to heaven, is to fabricate out of non-existent cloth a large measure of your argument. In these cases, it's good to remember the old adage, Renee, how does it go? Uh, Quote, making something up out of thin air is not an argument. That is talking, (laughs) unquote. It seems to me that... Those kind of interpretations will always land on the flaccid and unconvincing, quote, God works in mysterious ways, (laughs) cop-out. But in my opinion, each of those previous interpretations are kind of interesting, but they lack a fundamental observation without which the listener is robbed of one of the song's greatest payoffs. Because of Dylan's songs of wisdom, songs of biting social commentary, his courage in speaking artistic truth to power, and his fearlessness in the face of public opinion, etc., sometimes we need to remind ourselves that he is really funny. Black Diamond Bay is one of those funny songs. Not as slapstick as Talkin' Bear Mountain Picnic or Motor Psycho Nightmare or Talkin' John Birch Paranoid Blues, but rather a somewhat black comedy. So, first of all, compare the ending with Desolation Row. In the last verse of each song, Dylan tells his audience what he's been up to for the previous several verses. In in Desolation Row, he reveals, These people that you mention, yes, I know them, they're all quite lame. I've had to rearrange their faces to give them all another name. He could be speaking of local characters, but in order to give them life to the random listener... He describes their appearance, actions, philosophies, etc., by referencing names and faces from history that we can imagine and recognize. It's quite an ingenious way of telling the audience, you don't know Fred Smith, but he sort of looks like Einstein and Robin Hood. And Fred Smith's essence is in focus here, not his real name in real life. In Black Diamond Bay, Dylan confesses that he spun this yarn out of creative whole cloth. It's a shaggy dog story. I like to believe that Dylan himself was watching the news about a natural disaster somewhere, saw the camera pan across a demolished area, and in the frame there was a Panama hat and a pair of Greek shoes, and he just made up the rest. He wrote the story backwards, which is kind of interesting. It unfolds in the opposite direction. So whose shoes were these? Who wore this hat, and where was she going? Who else was there? The fun spills off the page and from the vinyl. Soviet ambassador is a great rhyme for heading for the second floor. So in the hands of a genius songwriter, he delivers a large cast of characters, an intriguing and amusing story, and delivers them in a way that mirrors a comment he, didn't, he made in Don't Look Back. It was, he was speaking derisively to a Time magazine reporter and said something close to, the truth is just a plain picture, a tramp vomiting into a sewer next to Mr. Rockefeller or C.W. Jones on a subway going to work, etc. And lots of young children have had the experience in creative writing classes where they've written most of their story and they need to wrap it up. But there are all these loose ends, so they say, and I woke up, it all was a dream. So Dylan, (laughs) the Nobel laureate with a wry smile, is doing an amusing version of the same thing and entertaining us all along the way. Quote, I accept chaos. I'm not sure whether it accepts me, close quote. Dylan once wrote that, I think, on the, on the liner notes of one of his albums or one of Joan Baez's albums. Black Diamond Bay is a description of chaos. I think it's a mistake to read into Black Diamond Bay that Dylan believed that these characters deserved to die for the smallest examples of questionable human behavior. 
At best, that's the opposite of what he was saying, which in this song is something more like nothing matters morally. The volcano is an equal opportunity killer. But for me, even that is secondary. The greatest joy of this particular Dylan ro- roller coaster ride is following how the genius creative mind sees on the TV news a couple of random mundane items, the shoes, a hat, and spins a complex tale of wonder from it. We've said before that Dylan apprehends the world differently than the rest of us. In that spirit, almost anything to him is a potential inspiration. My name is Andy Hill. And my name is Renee Safier. We're the producers of Dylan Fest, which is held every May in the Los Angeles area. In addition to our love for Bob Dylan, we have 15 CDs, including nine CDs of our original material. And you can buy our music and find out where we're playing on our website, which is www.andyandrenee.com. So if you're in the L.A. area, we perform every Friday night at Portsacol Restaurant in San Pedro. And we'll see you next time on Talking Bob Dylan. And the morning light breaks open, the creek comes down and he asks for a rope and a pen that will write. Paul Thomas, you of the desk clerk says, carefully removes his fans, am I hearing you right? And as the yellow fog is drifting, the creek is quickly heading for the second floor. Him on the spiral staircase, thinking he's the Soviet ambassador. She stops to speak, but he walks away. As the storm clouds rise and the palm branches sway. Sits beneath the fan doing business where the tiny man is sails in a rain. Lightning strikes, the lights blow out. The desk clerk wakes, he begins to shout. Can you see anything? Then the Greek appears on the second floor in his bare feet with a rope around his neck. While I lose her in the gap. But the dealer says, a ton de vous, si vous play. As the rain beats down and the cranes fly away from Black Diamond Bay. The desk clerk heard the woman laugh as he looked around in the aftermath and the soldier got tough. She says, well, that ain't enough And she ran upstairs to pack her bags While a horse from taxi waited at the curb She passed the door there, the Greek had locked Where a handwritten sign read, do not disturb She knocked on it anyway To someone quick, but the Greek said, Go away, kick the chair to the floor. He hung there from a chandelier. She cried, Help, there's danger near. Please open up another door. And the volcano erupted, and the lava flowed down from the mountain high above. Soldier and Thinking of a bit of love The desolate says it happens every day As the stars fell down And the fields burned away From black time and day As the island slowly sank The loser finally broke the bank In the gambling room Spend it in the tomb.
She sheds a tear, then begins to pray As the fire burns on and the smoke drifts away From that time of day I was sitting home alone one night In L.A. watching old frostbite on the 7 o'clock news That left nothing but a Panama hat and a pair of old Greek shoes. It didn't seem like much was happening, so I turned it off and went to grab another beer. Seems like every time you turn around, there's another hard luck story that you're gonna hear, and there's really nothing anyone can say. 